Rome lives 400 to 1,000 of the Common Era. Around 300 of the Common Era, the Roman Emperor Diocletian decided to redivide his empire, to reorganize it to provide it with stability. Diocletian realized that it was difficult for a single man to rule over an empire that stretched one, from one end of the Mediterranean to the other. He decided to take on some help and to establish a formal secession. That division separated the Eastern Mediterranean from the Western Mediterranean. There was already an informal division from the ancient languages and cultures of the day. Greek dominated the East, Latin dominated the West. That division only hardened and expanded over the next thousand years. Diocletian had hoped that by giving an Augustus in Rome half of the empire, he would provide stability. Each of the Augustus, one in Rome, one in Byzantium, would then have and choose a Caesar. Once an Augustus died, the Caesar would step up, providing a formal role of succession. One of those Caesars, Constantine, started on the frontier of the Roman Empire and moved into Rome. In 312, Constantine moved from the frontier of the empire along the Rhine River, moved on Rome, attacked the city, won the Battle of Milvian Bridge, and seized the capital for himself. He used his victory over Rome to launch an attack on the rest of the empire and eventually Constantine secured his control over the entire Mediterranean world. This put an end to Diocletian's reforms. Constantine then moved his capital from Rome to Byzantium and renamed it Constantinople. The civilization that continued to live in Constantinople was the Roman Empire. They were the legitimate heirs to Rome. And so even though Rome itself decayed over the next thousand years, Byzantium continued to live as Rome. Constantine's decision to move the capital from Rome to Constantinople was fortuitous because in the West, tribes that had lived outside of the Roman Empire began to put pressure on the frontier, moving across the Danube and moving across the Rhine. One of the most successful tribes were the Goths. The Goths actually made it to Rome in 410 and sacked the city. This was a quite a dramatic turn of events. No barbarian, no outsider had ever made it inside the walls of Rome. The Goths did. Rome fell. Following close on the heels of the Goths were the Huns. The most dramatic leader in the Huns was Attila. Attila crossed the Balkans and terrorized it. Attila moved into Western Europe and terrorized it. Attila moved across the Alps, going all the way to Rome and terrorized the Italian peninsula. Attila brought an end to Roman peace in Western Europe. In Western Europe, Roman military units slowly disintegrated and pulled back to defend the capital of Constantinople. Within 200 years, Constantinople found itself with an attack from the east, this time from the followers of the prophet Muhammad. Muhammad reimagined and reinterpreted the Abrahamic faiths of Judaism and Christianity. Muhammad provided a new revelation from God, and he established a godly empire that stretched out of Saudi Arabia across North Africa and then hammered on the gates of Constantinople itself. Constantinople finally fell to the forces of Islam at the end of the 1400s. So while historians can rightly talk about the fall of Rome, Rome lives. Rome lived on in Constantinople. The Roman Empire maintained its sovereignty over Constantinople for the next thousand years. Then, in Rome itself, the Bishop of Rome, later called the Pope, 
established himself as the monarch of central Italy. He claimed to be the rightful descendants of the Roman Empire. He used his position and influence to dominate politics in Western Europe. The secular monarchs of Western Europe weren't to be outdone. They too claimed legitimacy from Rome. As Roman armies retreated from Western Europe, Germanic kings made deals with the Romans. Those deals allowed the secular rulers of Western Europe to claim rightful rule based on Roman authority. So no matter how you look at the period from 400 to 1000, in each case the Byzantine Empire, the Papal States, and feudal Europe all continue to yell loud and clear, Rome lives. Rome lives in their authority in Europe. 